Hey, what's up guys, it's Tecosor. As promised, today I'm excited to compare side by side the QA90C and its successor, the QA90D from this year lineup for Samsung mini LED TVs that both comes in 43 inch size. I'll be showing you all the features that the new model bring to the table. Let's get right into it. Starting with inputs, both models have the exact same layout. Two USB 3 ports, an optical audio, 4 HDMI 2.1 that are capable of 144Hz refresh rate, a LAN port and a bunch shield that are intended for antenna, so they are quite identical as far as inputs. Both models also feature a great anti-reflective coating. It's a glossy finish but has anti-reflection properties, I don't see any rainbow effect. The two of them share the same echo remote and are quite the same with the button layout and have a solar panel for it charging. The only difference on the QA90D1 is the addition for this texture at the bottom for a better grip. Other than that, they are pretty much the same. The display pixel structure is also identical with both featuring PGR pixels layout. I'm using software version 14.10 on the QA90C and 11.6 on the QA90D. You might notice that the menus have changed a bit as well. Let's get into the new settings I found on the QA90D. In the picture clarity found in the picture expert setting, at first glance, it may look the same. But in the noise reduction setting, on the QA90C, you could select between off or auto. While on the QA90D, you can choose between off, standard, and high. Here I have a low resolution movie loaded in 720p and we can see how it's helping in reducing the noise. Be careful though. As setting it on high may start to smoothen out image detail. At times you might feel it's based on high and other times on standard. So experiment with it and set it depending on what you find nicer. At least it's good to have two options to choose from. Still in the picture expert setting, on the QI90D there is now a color poster feature, which is as the name suggests, gives colors more vividness and enrich them in a stepping manner. Moving on to the connection section and specifically the game mode setting. Let's head to the game picture expert. For game HDR, the previous QA90C only offered off or auto, while the QA90D has a basic and advanced option. And I found that the advanced mode has significantly improved HDR gaming, so I recommend to keep it on advanced since it doesn't reduce the brightness like it was the case before. Still in the game mode setting, there is a new feature called minimap auto detection that recognize the location of the game minimap when using the minimap zoom. The QA90D processor is known by NQ4 AI Gen 2. A newer generation offers the QA90C which is the NQ4 AI Gen 1, and it's promising a better AI enhancement of scaling and such. Again, I have a movie loaded on a USB flash drive in HD resolution, 720p, and the upscaling improvement is like nothing I've ever seen. The way it upscales such a low resolution on a 4K display is really amazing. I almost couldn't believe it to the point that I recorded the comparisons twice. It's just mind-blowing. Then I wanted to compare them on the Nintendo Switch, which maxed out at 1080p for TV input. So theoretically, it should upscale it. Keep in mind that upscaling doesn't work neither in game mode nor when using HDMI for PC. So I had to turn off game mode to ensure it's upscaling the image. Here is the difference, while it's not as dramatic as it was with the movie, but overall, I really love the image on the QA90D. It's fixing many of the Switch hardware shortcomings, the noisy looking, and the undefined details. Most TVs manage pretty well, but the color tone and image details just look a bit better on the QA90D. On the QA90C, I always had a greenish tone even with the standard color temperature setting chosen. 
On the QA90D, it's much more calibrated. Going to general and then to intelligent setting, on the QN90D, we now have a new adaptive picture mode that uses AI to optimize the picture based on your preferred image look. It opens this setup process to customize the picture based on content type like for sports, movies, or general viewing. This AI gives you images to choose from and based on that, it will tailor the image for you, whether you prefer higher or lower contrast warm or cold color tone, color saturation level, etc. Once you finish, you can further customize it in here, like if you decide to change settings based on one content type, like for sport, it will separately show you settings for contrast, color, and color tone. Finally, you can reset the AI customization back to default and start it all over again. It's similar to what LG has introduced with their C4, which I showed you how it works in its review. Also, the QA90C has active voice amplifier, which analyzes noise in real time and optimizes audio based on it. While the QA90D has a upgraded Active Voice Amplifier Pro, which is a superior version. Additionally, the QA90C has Adaptive Sound Plus, which analyzes audio content and the space around your TV in real time, while the QA90D has now Adaptive Sound Pro, also an upgraded version which remasters sound using AI and analyzes it offering a bit more superior performance for sound. Now regarding picture quality, I've actually noticed that the QA90D gives a much more real white tone than the QA90C, which has a bit of cold color temperature, even though they have the same standard color temperature option selected. I also noticed better uniformity on the QA90D. On the QA90C, I used to see some dirty screen effect on a grey background. For text clarity, they are both quite good, but as you can see, you may notice some text fringing on both more noticeable if you zoom in. And my biggest downside is unfortunately present on both, which is a bad response time. For a VA panel, it's to be expected, but as you can see, when I use a scroll wheel going up and down, it's giving me text trailing and image ghosting. I didn't see any improvement on the QA90D over the C in this part. While in gaming and video consumption, it's not noticeable at all, but if you tend to scroll down a lot or use it for documentation, it can get quite annoying on both. Let's test now the local dimming. I haven't noticed a significant difference, but you can see when the circle gets too small and fast, how on the QA90D, it's ever so slightly brighter. Honestly, you can see in a real world scene that local dimming is quite good on both. However, I can't help but feel that the QA90D is managing quite better with this blooming effect and a brighter HDR image. Also here you can see how the QA90D is able to dim the dark side of the moon totally, while the QA90C is still showing some parts of the moon that are supposed to be totally dark. What I always noticed is that the QA90D is really keeping shapes way more defined and colorful, focusing on highlight in such an incredible way. So I can say with full confidence that the QA90D is a good improvement for Samsung Neo QLED TVs thanks to its amazing new processor that's not only capable of improving picture quality but also of scaling it in a magical way. It packs lots of great features that are going to give you good time enjoying it for years to come. The QN90C is still a beast, but the D model just feels a bit more refined in the right direction and is quite competitive against what LG is offering with their C4 42 inch TV which I reviewed as well, you can check it out here. And that's it for this video, if you have any questions, please write them in the comment section and if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a like and subscribe to TikTok. thanks for watching and see you in the next one.